Throughout the history of humanity, whenever people have been competing for something, especially for money, cheating has always been lurking around the corner. Or, for most of the competitive sports or even video games that we have, cheating has occurred. Cheating being the intentional breaking of the rules of a player. Um, we recently talked about whether Hungrybox broke the rules uh, when playing against Triff, when Hungrybox went under the stage, did like 12 pounds and uh, won the game through a timeout. Our conclusion was that Hungrybox probably didn't break the rules, just because the rules are so unclearly defined. Uh, it says that stalling isn't allowed, but there's no elaboration on what counts as stalling. That I would reasonably say that Hungrybox did not break the rules here and shouldn't be punished for this. Um, he just, you know, did what he knew was allowed by the rules that were lacking in a clear definition of what stalling is. And also, you know, it was just like karma and fair based on how the match had been going, so I don't blame him for that at all. Um, Melee has been around for a long, long time. Um, we've been playing this game for 23 years soon. Uh, came out in November of 2001. Unless you're from Europe, then you had to wait like roughly a year longer. That's just how it was back then. Uh, but yeah, Hungrybox um, did something that arguably could be classified as breaking the rules here. But I think most reasonable people will conclude that this was not breaking the rules and wasn't cheating. I also don't think he was doing this like knowing that, oh, you know, this should be banned or this is technically banned by the rules, I'll do it anyways. He just did it because he knew what the rules are. Maybe he didn't know the exact rules, but just from having played this game for so long, he has done this before, he has seen other people do this before, people haven't gotten punished for it, so he knew he could do it himself, and that's totally fair. Um, the one cheating scandal we had in Melee, which isn't really a scandal because it happened on a very small local level, was what Super Smash Bros. Wiki describes uh, as also known as Pichu Gate, or the Super Pichu Cheating Scandal. I've never heard anyone call it that before, but those names are amazing and I'll stick with those. Um, where a local player in Northeast Ohio um, just brought a modded version of the game. Um, and he only played on his own setup, on the Wii that he brought. And on that Wii, if you pick Pichu in a certain port and used a certain costume for Pichu, Pichu just became like the best character in the game. All the hitboxes way bigger, all the attacks way stronger, um, way, way heavier, so it was really hard to KO Pichu. You know, usually when Fox shines light characters, they fall down, get knocked down to the ground, but they made Pichu so heavy that Pichu didn't even get knocked down by Fox's shine anymore, which seems like a very, very obvious thing to tell. But since this happened on a very small local level, where maybe people aren't as experienced, um, you know, maybe it took a bit longer to notice than, yeah, it necessarily would have at a major tournament. So, with this in mind, I think it's really surprising that stuff like this hasn't happened more often, especially on a local level where people just bring their own consoles, right? Because otherwise, lots of locals that happen or even Smash Fest wouldn't, wouldn't occur if people didn't bring their own stuff because it's very hard to have all these Wiis or GameCubes and all these CRTs stashed away somewhere. So having the community support the tournament organizers is huge, but I think when it comes to small stuff like Smash Fest, where people just come to hang out and play, there isn't, isn't really a point in bringing like a hacked version of the game where you make your own character better. And at Locals, you probably know the people around you, um, and you're part of a community, right? You don't want to be ostracized, because if people ever find out what you're doing, you'll just be banned. So. Now, let us look at a situation that happened somewhat recently, actually, where a player did break the rules. And not just break the rules that were like very loosely defined and you could argue that they broke the rules. No, like, there was a clearly defined rule set which was broken by that player and no one noticed. And this player wasn't just like some random doing this at a, at a local. This was one of Melee's best players doing this at one of Melee's biggest tournaments of the year. So... We'll just let this play out for a bit. You will see that there are ice climbers on the screen, um, <laughs> which may or may not surprise you. Probably not if you ever like ever looked at who I am or know me from anything at all. Um, I will let you know when the cheating takes place. So this was Genesis 8. Um, Genesis 8 was the tournament where uh, JMook had his big breakout and uh, made it to to like grand finals of the event. It was the first, um, the first Genesis back uh, after COVID. So COVID happened 2020, 
Uh, Genesis is always in the beginning of the year. So in 2020, we had a Genesis in January, then in 2021, there wasn't one. And then it came back in, uh, yeah, in 2022. It had to be uh, postponed. It was scheduled to be earlier in the year, and then it had to be postponed, which was really sad because a French player, Raoul, actually flew out to the event a week in advance um, in January. Because as a European, you've got like nine hours of time zone differences, and it takes a while to adjust to the jet lag. So if you want to do your best, you have to get there early. So Raoul arrived in, uh, in uh, California early, a week before the event, and then the event got delayed by like two and a half months and then he was just like well i'm in america now i booked my flights they were like a thousand dollars total probably and now the tournament isn't even happening so that kind of sucked uh i actually don't know how that ended up playing out if he ended up going to the later version of it actually let me look that up because that's that's pretty interesting actually uh there might have been like a fundraiser or something for it let's check it out uh yes did end up going to genesis in april luckily would have been really sad otherwise. Um, whole role comes back. Love that guy. But yeah, um, that's that. So this is Genesis. I told you I was going to tell you when the cheating happens. And I absolutely lied to you. I was just testing you. Because it actually did already occur. Um, did you see when it occurred? Maybe, maybe not. So let's look at what the rules are. Um, the exact rules for this tournament, uh, wasn't they weren't possible to find anymore because the rules for Genesis are always on the Genesis website, which gets updated every year. And when there isn't currently a Genesis announced, then the website just isn't usable. So you just get on it, then you have to enter a password. And if you don't know that, you know, which you won't, if you're not one of the tournament organizers, you can't look at the website. So I just pulled out the wobbling rule that all the other tournaments have been using nowadays, which um, was very similar to the one that was used back then in effect. The wording changed a little bit just to, you know, remove some of the edge cases. Uh, but trust me, what happened back then did not fall under on any of these edge cases. It was very clear-cut. So, what we're seeing here is that the rules say that wobbling with ice climbers is not permitted. A player is considered to be wobbling if the following conditions are met. The player grabs their opponent with a player-controlled ice climber. Alright, so, you know, you're playing Popo and Nana. Usually Popo is the one the player is controlling. Uh, so Popo grabs the opponent. Second condition is the CPU-controlled climber has not been KO'd. Alright, so you grab the opponent with Popo while Nana is next to you and like, you know, not uh, waiting for you to lose your stock so you can be back together. And then, the last part is, during the grab, the opponent is plausibly locked and continuous hits done by a series of attacks including at least 4 pummels. So plausibly locked and continuous hits done just means that when Ice Climbers grab you and they do a pummel and a Nana attack um, one after another, they can do it in ways where you can't get out. So they lock you in continuous grab hits done, uh, and that's what wobbling is, right? Um, where people, where ice climbers just do that over and over and over again, and you never get out. And to prevent them from doing that, there is this maximum uh, of <coughs> being allowed to do three pummels. And if you do at least four pummels and keep the opponent locked in grab hits done during that time, then once you do the fourth pummel, that that's wobbling, right? Like you you messed up. What is the punishment for this? In these rules, it doesn't state that. It just says wobbling is banned. But like, what happens? Does the TO come up and like, you know, have like an electric fly swatter and just swat you with it while you play the rest of the set to like make it even again? I don't know. I would do that probably, it would be funny. And I know most of the Ice Timers players personally, so um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be assault because they're my homies. Um, I'm sure the judge will love hearing that. Uh, but anyways, yeah, the, what the punishment would be, I'm not sure. Maybe it was clearly stated in the Genesis rule set. Usually the safe bet is always like, it's just a game loss, right? If it can be proven and if it's certain that this occurred, then the Ice Climbers player just loses that game and then the set goes on. Um, like disqualifying someone for it, I don't know, if they do it a second time and you can prove that again, then maybe like you can make them lose the set and then if they do it again a third time, like, okay, you know, this is no accident anymore, you're just doing this intentionally, like... Go, go leave the venue, please, or just, you know, stop playing in tournament for now. That'd be fair, um, but we don't know. So, who are these people here? Like, they look pretty good, right? They were playing, they look pretty strong. And you'll see that um, my screen is, like, slightly cropped in all directions. And the, <laughs> the writing at the top is really small, because I didn't want you to be able to read who's playing. Um, as I said, this tournament was in 2022, 
And the Ice Climbers you're seeing is actually the best Ice Climbers player um, in that year, and the best Ice Climbers player we've had post wobbling ban by far. Uh, yeah, this is this is Slug, and this is Slug playing against Null, and I think both of these players were top 50 in that year. Um, so this is like a very high level match. They're playing in top 64 of Genesis. Uh, and yeah, we'll we'll check out what happened. I think it must have been around here, maybe, maybe a bit before, because I made it so small. I actually can't see. Okay, there we go. Um, I actually can't see the exact time anymore. So let me see where it was, because I think it was about here. I thought I had remembered the time, but I may not have remembered the time. Okay, so this is it right here. Um, gets this grab. And now, like that, that looked like a pretty, you know, that didn't look too different from like what other ICs are doing nowadays, right? That didn't look much different from what I did like a million times at the Eggdog Invitational. So why, why, is, why is that not allowed? Like why, you know, it looks the exact same. You know, he does a blizzard and does a couple punches. Like what's, what's the difference? What's the deal here? So it all comes down to how Ice Climber's Blizzard works when you grab someone. Uh, Ice Climber's Blizzard is like one hitbox that comes out and then it stays out for a while, right? If I do this and I just like chill out in the grab, my opponent, um, so what I'm doing on screen right now, for those who aren't watching or just listening, I'm just doing a grab with Popo while Nana starts up a blizzard, so the grab hits, and then the opponent gets hit by the blizzard while Popo is just holding the opponent in the grab and not doing any pummels. This keeps the opponent locked in the grab, right? So if I just do this, I've done zero pummels, but my opponent has been stuck in the grab the entire time. So if I want to get the most of my damage, I can now, with that blizzard, do three pummels and three nana attacks after that first blizzard. However, during each blizzard you do while the opponent is grab, you could also pummel, right? Um, you know, there's no real reason to do this, because every pummel you do um, allows you to get one fewer nana attack in, because you can only do a total of three popo pummels, um, because once you do a fourth one, while alternating nana attacks in between, you'll be wobbling, and then everyone will hate you, and then you can never... Everyone will laugh at you, they'll point your, their fingers at you, they will all wear shirts saying that you're a wobbler, and then, you know, uh, that'll be really sad. So, that's what happened in this clip, is that a regular, like, ledge off combo, like something like this, right, that you'll see from me, this is legal, because this is three pummels, three nana attacks. But I could do the same combo in a way where I pummel once during the blizzard, and now that same combo would no longer be legal because the one extra pummel during the blizzard, which functionally doesn't change anything other than doing like four additional damage from the pummel, um, oh, it's three actually, doing three additional damage from the pummel, um, it gets me closer to that threshold that is set by the rules. And that's what happened here. Slug was pretty new to like these kind of, uh, yeah, post wobbling band grab combos. What Slug would usually do is just do the blizzard Pummel twice during it and then throw instant, right? Which is fine, you're getting one nana attack and one blizzard, does decent damage, and you know, you're just pummeling twice during it because you're gonna throw right after anyways, because you don't feel confident doing more nana attacks and alternating more moves, because it is kinda hard. But by doing this, and then being like, oh shit, I need more damage, and then doing another two pummels and two nana attacks, you've now done four pummels, and the opponent has been locked and grab hits on the entire time. And that's wobbling, like we just talked about. It was more than three pummels, with the opponent plausibly locked and grab hits done the entire time. Was this intentional? No. This was not cheating. To be to be clear, Slug didn't cheat here. Slug unintentionally broke a rule that was somewhat new, that probably a lot of Ice Climbers players didn't even know exactly what it was like. They just knew like, oh, I can't wobble anymore, guess I'll just, you know, don't do wobbling. And then if you're a good Ice, these people will be like, yo, you should do these grab combos, like they do more damage, you should try that out. And Slug probably tried that out and just, you know, had the old muscle memory kick in and then in the heat of the moment, in a game as fast as melee, went for the default do a blizzard and just pummel th all throughout it and then also being like, I need more damage, I'm gonna do more attacks because that's, you know, what I should do. And unintentionally ended up doing too many attacks. Um, I'll just let it play out one more time and we'll just count through the pummels together. 
So here's one hand off to Nana, that's fine. Nana throws, and now with this grab is where it starts. Slug gets the grab. I'll just let it play out in like very low speed. 0.25. Alright, so here's the first pummel. Here's a blizzard. There's the second pummel. You have to look at the headbutts from the guy in the dark blue one. There's the third pummel. And there's the fourth one. And now we throw. You know, so it's four pummels. And Nana attacks in between each of them, blocking the opponent and hits them. Um, yeah. So again, all of this is fine, because each time you throw, this is a Nana forward throw, the pummel counter resets. Here you grab pummel, Nana blizzard, pummel two, pummel three, Nana down tilt, pummel four. That's wobbling. Um, now, you might say, this is stupid, like, this is just like a regular icy combo, just you know, and one during the blizzard you can pummel twice or pummel once. The only difference is like it does three more percent if you pummel twice. Like why is one of them banned, the other one isn't? And that is because the only way to like realistically, reliably apply this to some extent is by just giving a limit of pummels. Because then a lot of edge cases like Nana accidentally like jabbing while she's disconnected, right? Because sometimes you grab the opponent with Nana and it's ambiguous whether Nana is with you or not. So you press A to pummel, but while you press A to pummel, Nana reconnects with you. And then that pummel makes her do a jab that you didn't mean to do because Nana, you know, you thought she wasn't connected to you. But then as you press A in that moment, she reconnects with you and then she listens to your A input and does her own jab. It's, it's a whole ordeal and lots of smart people have thought about this a lot. And I think the current definition makes a lot of sense. And luckily nowadays we have, don't tell Nintendo, but we have a code that we use in-game that makes it so that if Ice Climbers do um, a fourth pummel, while the opponent has been locked in grab hits done the entire time, the opponent just pops out of the grab instantly and both Ice Climbers are like put into a little grab release animation. Um, so that even if you try to wobble at tournaments, at most of them that have this code at least, um, which is most of them from my experience at least, um, you just won't be able to do that. On some setups, there is an old code floating around, which doesn't work correctly. Um, if you do three pummels and three nana attacks, which should be allowed, right? Because once you do the fourth pummel, that's wobbling. If you just do three, that should be allowed. There is one code out there that has the opponent pop out after the nana, after nana's third attack, which is wrong, right? Because you're allowed to do three pummels and three nana attacks. So having the grab end forcefully in that moment is, you know, not according, not in accordance with the rules. So in some very old versions of Nintendo, Nintendo, which is usually what Melee is played through um, at the moment, um, which is just like a program you can put on your Wii to like boot up Melee and have, you know, add some codes to it, like UCF. Yeah, that's what will then break, break your grab. But luckily, you know, most TOs are good about changing their setups, especially once you tell them. And that's why when I go to a tournament, I'll just try out every setup. Whenever I have to play a set, I'll do a hand warmer where I put a CPU on stage with the opponent myself and just check that the grab combos I know should work do work. And if I can wobble, I'll tell them like, yo, like, there is no wobbling code on here. Just so that you're aware, you might want to put it on. I'm not going to do it. You might not be able to tell if I'm wobbling or not, but trust me, if you watch it back and read through the rules, you'll know that I'm that I'm okay, like I'm one of the good wobblers. Um, I can say that word because I'm, I'm one of them. Uh, but yeah, uh, cool, That that's what happened. And again, this was in 2022. So this was very recent. This is two and a half years ago, roughly, but less than that. And this was two very good players, like the best Ice Climbers player in the world at the time against one of the very, like one of the best Fox players we had on a global scale. Of course, there's lots of Fox players, but Null is still like a clearly at least top 50 level Fox, and this was a very meaningful set in bracket of what might have been the biggest tournament of the year. Cool, so let me know what you think about <laughs> this this instance. Again, I don't think Slug cheated here. Um, who should have like called this out? Should Slug have been like, like right after doing it, God not be like, oh my gosh, like I just wobbled you, I'm so sorry, like here's a hundred bucks and I'll DQ myself and buy you dinner, like, I didn't mean to do this, please don't hate me. I don't think so, because I also don't think that Slug even knew that this wasn't legal and didn't do it intentionally, like I said earlier. Also just watching this in slow-mo is hilarious. Um, yeah, so who should have called this out? Like, of course, if Null was like, yo, I think you wobbled here and went to the TO, 
then I don't know if Noel would have won this set or this game. Usually if you walk up to the TOs like that, they'll just groan and be like, come on guys, we're really doing this. Um, because I'm pretty certain that the TOs aren't going to know the rule by heart, so you kind of like, you all have to pull it out together, read through it, try to understand it, because, you know, I had to explain it to you, and even then it might not have been clear if you don't understand how ice climbers work really well, or at least decently well. Um, Slug probably would have understood it, Null might not have, the TOs might not have, because in this game, unfortunately, the people who are tasked to uh, make sure the rules are being applied properly are the people who are, like, TOs are usually good at, like, organizing events, you know, organizing people, managing the project that entails, like, booking a very expensive venue, somehow getting enough setups and TVs into a place, making sure security is good for an event, making sure there is a deal with the hotel, right? The TOs aren't the guys who are sitting around all day, like, thinking about what's the optimal ice climbers grab combo. Those people are usually, you know, like me, getting like 129th at a, at a major and then uh, going back to their miserable lives. I'm, I'm kidding, I've never gotten 129th at a major, I don't think so, and my life's amazing. But um, I could see myself in that spot if I don't, uh, if I don't get, my, get my stuff together. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, just, I'm just joking, I'm having a great life. Cool, um, great. Let me know what you think about wobbling. Um, don't send any hate towards either player. Like I said, um, it was just hard to know. And if you're playing against ICs, you know, wobbling has been banned. You get hit by a bunch of moves. Very hard to tell the difference between did they pummel twice during a blizzard or once. And one of them is legal, one of them isn't. Yeah. Uh, all right. Cool. So, yeah, let me know what the results or what the judgment here should have been. What should have happened to the um, unintentional wobbler. What should the fox have done? Um, is it reasonable for people like to is it reasonable to expect people to know the rules? Um, I think in this case not really. I mean of course people should know the rules, but I don't think anyone's ever looked at a melee rule set except for me and maybe May. Um, so yeah, uh, it's probably a best idea to just make sure the wobbling ban code that automatically disables it is turned on on every setup and that the proper code is the one that's being used and not a wrong one that just messes up the ice climbers grabs for no good reason cool uh hope you enjoyed i'll listen to you all next time and also um if you have any suggestions for future video topics could be about a story at an event could be about um character interactions that you like or storylines you've seen that you find cool feel free to let me know in the comments and i will surely pick up some of those um great see you next time <laughs>